you cut a piece of metal out like paper. You beat the crap out of it with a hammer. Whoa, the Lycan chassis going on. And as a little teaser, there's gonna be people on the internet, you're not holding the hammer right. That's not how you do it. What's up people? So we've got some new tools and a lot of great metal forming tools coming, which is going to be fantastic for Genius Garage students coming up in the near future and for all the future years to come, but also things of my own so that I can start building incredible custom cars and replicating cars from history that I mentioned in an earlier episode this week about Casey's Dangerous History, where basically I remake all the coolest, fastest, most insane and dangerous vehicles from racing histories and then go drive them. But we got a bunch of stuff, so come in and check out the mess. I want to show you some of the tools and give you guys a taste. Also a little teaser, whoa, the Lycan chassis going on. And as a little teaser, there may be a nose fitting on this thing, so it gives you guys a little bit of an idea what's going on. But to build cars and motor vehicles and motorcycles, kind of the old fashioned way that's still totally relevant today is metal forming. So with a production based vehicle, if you want to look carefully, for instance, this inner fender was stamped from steel for the Porsche, what was originally there with a big die. But let's say you want to hand make things or you want to make a prototype car, a racing vehicle or something. You have to know how to do it by hand. And some of that is getting better tools. I got a bigger sheet metal brake coming soon. This is a little one that the aerospace guys used last year. Got a tubing bender here. But maybe the most fun thing, I want to show you guys this. So let's, let's get really simple today. I want to show you guys some metal forming and why I'm so excited about this uh, and why I'm getting gearing up and getting excited to build a Lancia Stratos Zero replica. Guys, that's not the Lancia Stratos rally car. That's the Morin Stain Bertoni prototype the, where the windshield opens and you get in through that. But come on over here and look at this. So I got a little demonstration I wanted to show you guys. Let me take off my rings here. So got a couple of shears here, metal shears, and these things are just worth their weight in gold and they weigh a lot. So they're kind of awesome. This is a, uh, a big straight shear and it can cut pretty, pretty uh, thick metal and steel, steel sheets, also some rod and whatnot. I don't have this held down, but you can just see how it just slices through steel like butter. And that is so awesome because when you have good tools, you start knowing how steel and metal is kind of like hard clay. And when you have good tools and you actually do something with it, you can really make some neat pieces. I want you to come here and, and take a close look. I'm actually going to move this out of the way a little bit. I want to show you a demonstration about the old way of making fenders that's still valuable today. And I think this is really important for young people because let's face it right now, the world is in major trouble with the pandemic and the economy is going to be tough. So it's going to be tougher to go out and buy whatever you wanted. So we're going to have to build whatever you want. And then you're just limited by what you can do with your own two hands and your imagination, but you got to have some decent tools. And if you want to shape things out of metal, I've got some things here and this isn't even the final stuff, but a little bit of a sandbag. I got a ball peen hammer. Where the heck the sheet metal hammer go? Somebody's are good. <laughs> Probably misplaced it. Got a sheet metal hammer here. I'm going to show you a demonstration with a piece of wood, a vise, and a shear. That's all we need. Now this, I don't have a teeny tiny English wheel here yet, but this is like a really fast done kind of like how a fender would have been on like a 1920s Bentley, or this might be something you'd see on a bumper, or this could be the edge of a fender, but it's a compound curve. So let's, let's work some steel here together today and show you guys how it's so important. Now this coming close, this is 20 gauge steel. It's rather flexible. It's fairly malleable. This is just a mild steel. It welds real nice. It's got good strength. You could create a very strong structure out of it. Let's see here. This is some thicker steel. That's 14 gauge. I, I cannot really bend that with my hands. It's very strong, but it's heavier and thicker. Well, this is 20 gauge and this 20 gauge would be a good thickness for doing some body work or something like that. So what I'm going to do is I want to show you guys, I'm going to make another little mini fender kind of thing here today. So first thing I'm going to do, and this is just kind of freehand sort of fun. I'm going to shear this. Let me think, how do I want to do this? Tell you what, I'm not even going to share it yet. We're going to do that in a minute for fun, but come here and look. So here's the sandbag and this is, this was literally used as ballast in an airplane we had for when it was sits. So this is not a proper sandbag to do something with, but I'm going to start hitting the metal like this to make it, it's going to stretch a little bit in the middle and then it's going to get wrinkles on the edge. And then I'm going to, it'll it, eventually I'll be able to hammer the metal and kind of shrink the metal here. So it's going to curve it like this and curve it like that. So it's going to be a compound curve. Here we go. Watch this. 
Now come here and look close. I want to show you the first step. That is just the first thing. Literally just dense. Looks like crap, right? Nothing special. You'd think that was just garbage and I'm an idiot. Well, I might be, but it's not. This is going to be amazing. Here we go. All right. I'm going to hit a harder cut. I want to show you some interesting things this does. Okay, now I want to show you this. This is kind of neat. So it's starting to expand in the middle and stretch from those dents. But if you see the waves on the side, I can actually bring this together and start smoothing it and the metal will start to come together and even shrink a little. So I'm going to keep beating on it. Can you see it well? Okay. Reasonably, is the, is the window the messing you up at all? Okay, here we go. We're just going to go on it for a while. So I'm going to go in the middle a little bit here. There's a small piece and kind of, because it's such a small piece, and it's not a giant area, I don't have to worry about getting the metal too thin, so I can kind of just go crazy with it. All right. So now I'm working it sort of on a third, bringing this in more. And I'm gonna scratch it out a little bit. Now I'm gonna start getting more on that side. Okay, check this out. Now, starting to look a little smoother. You can see the bend here. It's neat, right? All right, so now I'm gonna start smoothing this out in a way and kind of getting it to shrink. So I'm gonna use the ball peen here and bring it a little closer, and then I'm gonna start showing it with the sheet metal hammer that's got a curve to it. So here we go. Now, I'm just working this one side Okay, so you can see this is the other side that I wasn't working, kind of bent like that. And this side is starting to come in smoother. See how it's bringing in like that? Now I'm gonna work this again a little bit. Here we go. There's gonna be people on the internet, you're not holding the hammer right. That's not how you do it. Oh, shut up, I'm doing fine. <laughs> All right, so smooth it out here. But uh, there's kind of the very rough piece. Now at this time, if you had an English wheel, and I'm doing a very small scale here, so it'd be a teeny tiny English wheel. But if you have something bigger, you could start running it through the English wheel. And if you run it through and pull it out, you can actually get that metal to start shrinking here. And then all these dents sort of smooth out. But I wanna show you how I got to this kind of position. And the, you know, the English, they use the wheel, right? But I'm pretty sure the Italians were all about just hammering the crap out of stuff more. And there's a bunch of different techniques for metal forming and there's no right way to do it. It's just whatever works the best. So I just wanted to show you guys, cause I think this is really neat. And I think this is also an art that people are intimidated to try, but you shouldn't be because it's, it's just an art. Metal is just cool to form. So let's have a little fun. Let's go over to this, um, this little anvil kind of thing going on here. I'm gonna show you. Can you see decently? I'm also bringing it a little smoother. So now, now look at it, a lot smoother, right? So for the sake of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and shear this off right here. So have a look, come on over here and you can see it. This is, I just love this so much. Look at this tool, you guys, I, I am so excited. Oh my God, it's like butter. I bet you this thing will cut paper. This will probably be the last time it ever cuts paper. Now, okay, this is mostly like paper. Here we go, let's watch this. Oh, yes. Look at that. Like butter. Oh, yes. Cut it. Cut it. That is nice. But I can do it with metal. With metal. Now, this isn't bolted down yet because I haven't figured out where I'm going to put it, but I'm, I'm already excited and playing with it. So here I go. Hold it down. Look at that. Oh, is that nice? That is a nice cut. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go ahead and round these off, partially so I don't cut myself, but 
and partially because that's what I, there it needs to be for what I want to do with this bell. With this making like a little fender. All right, so come on over here. And the other thing that's neat about this particular shear, this is called a throatless shear. You can cut a straight line, of course, but it allows you to cut really beautiful curves. So watch this here. I'm going to cut. I'm going to start cutting. Start the cut. And I can just curve this. And it fe it, I feel like I'm laying down pinstriping, like vinyl pinstriping or with a brush. Look at that. Is that nice? I mean, man, I cannot wait to get this thing um, held down and really start forming some metal. So I'm just going to cut a curve on this little baby fender that I'm doing. And it's kind of fun, like doing a little baby fender like this. So if you learn how to do some basic metal forming and look, what I did today required hardly any skill. I mean, it really didn't. It, you just you cut a piece of metal out like paper, you beat the crap out of it with a hammer and you just have half a brain and then boom, you got a little baby fender. So what I'm saying is if you want to learn metal forming, but you don't have the space or time or money for a whole car, well, maybe you can make a little pedal car for some kids or something like that. That would be a fun project. And they're little kids. So if your 1920s Bentley isn't proportion perfect, they don't care. They think it's great. <laughs> so you can perfect your technique on kids. The only bad thing is those little kids, their bank accounts aren't that very good. So you better just do it for the, for nice reasons of being an artist. Okay. So I'm not real pleased with those. Casey, stop trying to be perfect on the internet. We already know you're lame. Okay, fine. Okay. So I basically just cut out some curves there. And they're pretty, pretty nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this a little bit more on the sandbag, just because it's got a nice curve here, but it's kind of flat there and it's kind of flat here. Um, I might try doing something else. Okay, so let me beat on it here. I wanna have it kind of that nice concave compound curve going on. So the radius continues even to the end. So I gotta kind of stretch out the metal. All right, here we go. Great. Okay, so there's, see how it's all kind of wonkous. Now this body hammer doesn't have a real tight radius. It's got about a radius like that. So by doing this on a hard anvil, I'm not gonna be able to put a tighter radius than what my hammer can do since I'm doing it in a very small scale. And what I'm doing by hand, which probably give me carpal tunnel or something, um, or tennis elbow, this is no different than what a plenishing hammer would do that would be like air power, like that, which is cool. It would be helpful if you're doing something bigger. But for right now, I just wanted to show you guys sort of the basic joy of metal forming here like that. So you remember what it started out like. And um, obviously these radiuses are different. This one's a little tighter than the other, and, but what I can do, I can flatten this out a little bit. And if I flatten it out, it kind of curves in a bit more. So you can see how really quickly you can start making like matching fenders. I mean, this is no different than if you were making bicycle fenders for something like that. Let's see. I don't know if I can get the angle right. Camera guy, find the right angle. So it looks like it's on. Over this way, up, this way, more there, up, 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 up. no tilt. No other way till. Eh? There you go. Oh, look, closer. oh, look at that. Look at that. It's like, okay, enough of that silliness. Anyway, you guys get that, right? But I hope, I hope you enjoyed this. And this, you could uh, beat on a little bit longer, smooth out. And this, I mean, keep in mind, this is a tiny scale. It has to be really perfect. But if this is the way it looked on a whole car you just built, it would be very easy to smooth this out and make it look nice. And if you use the English wheel technique, you can get in there and work it and do the finite things and it's going to smooth all that out and look gorgeous. And then it just comes down to you being a pretty good welder to weld your steel aluminum together on whatever buck mold you're making. But I wanted to show you guys this. I'm just really excited about bringing new tools to Genius Garage and also to my YouTube channel so we can do amazing builds together and inspire you guys. Uh, because look, I, I don't know why the vintage car world and everything out there is just saying it's a dying art. It's a lost art. It's from the past. It's only the past. It's some magic thing. Yeah, that's, that's not true. That's total crap. Like these old techniques. Okay. I will literally be utilizing some hand forming techniques of aluminum and steel 
on building the hypercar build with Genius Garage and teaching them that. And that is a perfectly acceptable, most intelligent way to make some pieces, even on modern things. So I just want to inspire you guys a little bit with it. It's fun. And also beating the crap out of something with a hammer to make something beautiful is fun. Yes. What else do I got? Camera guy, is there anything else cool here? You got the bigger brake and then you got the tubing bender. Yeah, but the bigger brake's not here yet. So you guys can see a bunch of tubing here, DOM tubing and some big steel sheet metal. I got a bunch more coming for myself and some for Genius Garage as well in the build. This is a basic tubing bender. It uses basically a hydraulic bottle jack and a couple of different dies for different sizes. And you put the tubing in, you bend it up and it rolls it. This is a slower way to do it. So this would be good for hobbyists or a small shop or if you're doing prototype stuff. Obviously it's a lot more cost effective than getting a big hydraulic thing you don't use as often. And then when you're not using it and it's together, you can consolidate it in the corner, which is good when you're doing things like this. So um, for Casey's Dangerous History, next week, the first episode, I'm gonna bring the Ducati Custom back. We're gonna finish it up. Um, obviously huge respect to motorcycle racers of road racing and especially history. And I think that 900 CC Ducati that's been built like a early to mid seventies race bike is the perfect place to start. One of the other things coming up too, if you guys have seen up here and maybe you want to come up here and you see, a little, see it a little better. This is the 1917 Auburn. If you guys remember from the build a little bit last year, it actually has wooden spoke wheels. And this chassis and all of its components were rusty disasters in a guy's barn. They've been sitting there for, God knows, probably 80 years or more rusting away. And there's not enough there to build a stock car. And frankly, the cars aren't worth enough and frankly cool enough to warrant spending the time and money to put it back to stock. But the gentleman wanted me to make a period correct race car with. So what's exciting about it is for Casey's Dangerous History, with the sheet metal forming stuff coming up soon, we're going to build a race car like it's the 19 teens again and drive it. It's going to be really cool, a lot of fun. This one's going to be steel bodied, a lot of metal forming techniques like that, and I hope you guys like it. And then of course, after that, we're going to get on the Lancia Strata Zero, the Silver Arrows cars, and the stuff that's really mind blowing. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this today. Please subscribe and I'll see you next I time. I hope you enjoyed today's video and naturally that you will subscribe, but please click that bell so I can continue to bring you wholesome and entertaining automotive content. Also, a huge thanks to Avalon King Ceramic Coating. They're supporting this channel and making this all possible. But more importantly, I'm looking forward to using it on all of my vehicles, including my old dirt bike. Ceramic coating bonds directly to the surface of your paint, trim, and plastics to give a long lasting shine that beats all waxes. It lasts for years and it's easy to maintain. I've got it on my Viper right now and my car has never looked this good. So give them a try. Again, thanks for watching and I look forward to see you next time.